All right, here we go. Let's go ahead and I'm going to give you the answers for chapter eight problems you were working on in class. So for practice A, number one, you should have 3.57 times 10 to the third kilograms per meter cubed. For B, you should have 6.4 times 10 to the second kilograms per meter cubed. For number two, the mass you got was 97 kilograms. Number three, you should have 9.4 times 10 to the third newtons. That's all practice A. We'll go through each one of them in class, but I wanted to give you those answers. So if you were working with them, you could actually check your answers. And last, but practice B. Number one, you should have 1.48 times 10 to the third newtons. For B, the pressure should be 1.88 times 10 to the fifth pascals. Number two, you should have 2.7 times 10 to the second pascals, or 200, I think it's 268 when I did it. And then number three, you should have 1.2 times 10 to the third pascals, and B is 6.02 times 10 to the negative second newtons, or 0 0.06 newtons. So those are the answers, first of all. Now let's talk about simple harmonic motion. Get this, these should be real quick, because, well, frankly, there's not a lot to it. There's a couple calculations. So simple harmonic motion, anything that moves back and forth, up and down with a rhythmic motion. So you'll see this here, maybe. Hooke's law is what dedicates it. Hooke's law, fancy term to go, okay, cool. If you look at the diagram, you displace a certain amount in X. Guess what? When you let go of that, it's going to come back to the starting point or the neutral point, and then it's going to compress this way, where it's also displaced from the origin. In a perfect system, it would go back and forth, back and forth, without losing any friction or losing any energy to friction. That being said, that's not going to happen. In this case, it'll go back and forth, back and forth, and eventually slow down, pretty much like you guys understand. So there's lots of ways to calculate and use this information. So the big idea is on that diagram we we're just looking at, at equilibrium or the center or the neutral point, the spring force and the mass's acceleration are zero, just like it says. There's nothing speeding it up, nothing slowing it down without friction. This is where also velocity reaches the maximum point. Now, at the ends, when it's finally come to a stop, the speed becomes zero, but that means the spring force and the acceleration are going to snap it back to the center point, and that's where the acceleration is its maximum. Hopefully that makes sense. Fairly easy to see. The same idea also holds true for a pendulum. Same idea. So in this case, Hooke's Law, you've seen it there. You've seen force of elastic is negative kx. When you calculated energy, it was negative one-half kx squared. This is a little different. The k, again, is the spring constant. So, so here's a sample problem. We're not going to go through it. I'm going to let you take a second and jump through those. If you've looked at the notes, rock on. If not, I'm going to skip through that actual answer and jump to the other half of the notes. So simple harmonic motion. So my mass spring system, that's one. Then the pendulum is the other. So simple harmonic motion, anything that has that motion back and forth. It's got a restoring force. So that second bullet, the restoring force is equal to the displacement from the origin. And here we go. A lot of verbiage to find all of these forces. Force due to tension, f of g of x, you guys see the component, the x component, is the only force acting on the bob, is the restoring force. This is the hardest part for people to understand, is the x component of the g of x, f of g of x, is the restoring force. Not any tension, not the weight, but that component, f of g sine of theta, is the restoring force. So, you might want to write that down, highlight it, star it. You can also do the f of g, f of g of y, and do those calculations to see f of t is really f of g of y as well. So, so here we go. Restoring force. This does only apply for angles above or under 15 degrees. Anything over 15 degrees, we start losing some energy in other ways. We're not going to deal with that other way right now. So, this last bullet. Restoring force is very nearly proportional to displacement. In most reality, you can use the displacement, how far you've moved it over, and that is the restoring force. It's not calculation accurate, but it is close. So, 
and there's your picture. This would be a good chart or diagram, if you will, to be able to explain and get through how the displacement on one, the equilibrium point on one, going back and forth, and how it affects your acceleration, your velocity, and the force. Okay. Amplitude and frequency, old terms, hopefully you remember from physical science. If not, pendulum's amplitude. It's basically the displacement from equilibrium. So the pendulum's amplitude is by the angle. Mass spring system is the amount of stretch, the, that distance. So SI units are radians. Yes, we've gone to the dark side, the radian. Anyway, also in meters for displacement. So period time, you've seen this equation before, or this abbreviation, period is T, time it takes from one cycle. So it goes out and comes back and then it goes back out. That's the whole period, not just half of it. So period of seconds, frequency is hertz. We'll get you the calculation right here. Frequency is one over the time. The period or period equals one over frequency. A lot of people don't do, realize that, but they are inversely related. And there's your definitions. This is the last one period of a pendulum. This is due to the length and the free fall acceleration. It has zero to do with the math of the actual mass of what's hanging underneath the pendulum. So take a look at that, do the calculations. That's it for this note. Don't forget to do the, the read on, check on learning, sorry.